the guidelines for the extemporaneous speaking. Each college or department is allowed only one contestant. Contestant must be a bona fide student of Central Philippine University. A photocopy of the contestant's ID and registration form shall be passed to Professor Bernardo Cagasan. Contestant must not be a champion of any English extemporaneous speaking contest. After picking a random question, each contestant will be allowed three minutes to think over their answers. The contestants are allowed a minimum of one minute and a maximum of three minutes to answer. A flaglet shall, a bell shall be rang thrice to signal 30 seconds before the maximum time limit and uh, the bell shall be rung continuously 10 times to signal the end of the three minute mark. One point shall be deducted from the contestant's final score in every five second excess or deficit from the moment of speaking. Again, the bell shall be rang three times to signal 30 seconds before the time limit and 10 times to signal the final bell or to signal the final bell or the end of the three minute mark. The questions shall be chosen by, com by the committee chairperson and are related to educational, environmental, political, and economic issues. The questions may also be related to this year's University Day theme, Central Spirit Leading Us Onward as One. The contestant shall answer the question in English. I will now read to you the criteria for judging for English extemporaneous speaking. So before answering the question, the contestants shall read the question given to them before they can give their answer. They will read the question number. Okay. So the criteria for judging for extemporaneous speaking, message or content, 35%, organization of ideas, 30%, and delivery, 15%, for a total of 100%. All right, may we now call on the contestants to go on stage for we will be starting with the consist proper. Contestant number one. Good morning and greetings to all of you. It is an absolute honor and a privilege to be standing in front of you on this very stage and to tell you what my opinion is about the question that I was given. I was given question number three. Some say that the university students should not be required to wear uniform as this curtails one's expression of individualism. However, wearing of uniform prepares students to be familiar with the profession they will be into. Are you in favor of this idea? Yes or no? And discuss your opinion. I believe that one's individuality cannot only be measured via clothes. It is also in your personality. It is also in the way you smile and how you handle yourself. So I am absolutely disagreeing with this uh, new policy that they want to be uh, put into motion, mainly because uh, uniforms are also one of the unifying factors of a university. It helps us also look our best, and also to, we have the confidence to be able to put our best foot forward. And so uh, going back to the first point that I was saying that uh, it is not that clothes or the uniform or any accessory of anything physical is what contributes to one's individualism. I, I, uh, individualism, I think that yes, we can uh, still show our true selves and, our, and show off our personality in other ways rather than just the clothes. Uh, this is my opinion and thank you so much for listening. Thank you, contestant number one.
my fellow Centralians, ladies and gentlemen, to the Board of Judges, my question is, my question is question number 10. Most public places, stores, transportation terminals, office establishments, and schools now have closed circuit television cameras or CCTVs installed in them. Some consider this invasion of privacy. What is your opinion? Is this beneficial or not? Now, I shall present you my three points why this is beneficial. First, if there is a lost item, at least we would know where to see it to look at the past of what happened where you left it. Second, to be aware of what happened during that time, to know if there's something bad that happened, kidnapping, or whatever that bad things do. Lastly, During kidnapping cases, at least we would know where to see where the victim was last found. Thank you. Thank you, contestant number two. Contestant number three. To my fellow students, the faculty members present, to families and friends, and of course, to our dear judges, a pleasant morning to each and everyone. The question that I have been given is question number five, and it tackles on the significance of the theme for this year's University Day, the central spirit leading us onward as one, and what are its significance to the Centralian student. First, the Centralian spirit is not a tangible thing. You cannot see it. You cannot touch it, you cannot describe its color or its shape, but you can feel it. You can feel it the moment that you step inside this very university. Therefore, its significance to students like me and like you is that it unites us all. As I've mentioned earlier, once you walk in here, you feel a sense of pride as, an, as a Centralian, and you feel the love, you feel the essence of being a Centralian when you are here. Second, it teaches values, and not just any values. It teaches core values by this university that includes faith, justice, stewardship, character, and excellence. And last but most importantly, it leads us onward as one. And how does it do that? Central Philippine University does not only produce future professional uh, individual, it hones us as an, over, as an overall individual. It hones our capabilities and our abilities to prepare us for a better and brighter future. To conclude my stand, the central and spirit is important because it unites, it teaches values, and it leads us to a better, brighter future. Thank you and a pleasant morning once again. Thank you, contestant number three. Contestant number four. Uh, good day, everyone. My question is uh, question number 16. So my question is all about heinous crimes. How do we allow heinous crimes in relation to the crime relating to death penalty? Now, first, we should consider how do you define crime? According to our penal justice system, uh, we, we, we define crime as a branch of law that defines crime treats their nature and provides for their punishment. Now, if we consider this thing, especially our penal justice system, especially in the crime of rape, the crime of drugs, especially in a crime in related to crime against dignity. So, how do we qualify it as such in respect to do we allow it to be punishable under the death penalty? Now, they say that death penalty is tantamount or against to the life of the person. Yes, that's true. Uh, no questions about that. But considering that the Philippines in our constitution, we defined it as social contract. So how do, how do we see this social contract? Social contract here is that all of the majority of the people would come into an agreement. Would come into an agreement in a sense that you would surrender your natural rights. You surrender your natural, natural rights in exchange for liberty. Now the question is, what is liberty? Liberty is a right granted by the state. So you surrender, you surrender your natural rights 
in exchange for liberty for the for in order for you to be protected by the state and for you to be in order to be protected by the state you must actually abide with the corresponding rules and regulation and the laws now considering that rape is a crime against the, the womanhood it's a crime against the life chastity and dignity of the individual can we qualify it to be punishable by death penalty my answer to it is yes yes simple simple in a sense that to rape someone to rape someone uh, honest to goodness i haven't raped anyone but to rape someone actually constitute that you are actually a threat you're actually a threat not just to the integrity of that individual but you are also considered as a threat to the community so if you would let that someone live in the community at some points you are also you're also making him as a some points as a free man to consider him as a free man is what to consider him as a free man is obnoxious to the law or as a, as a perpetrator of the law but as a perpetrator of the law you must actually abide to it how the question is why do, why should we abide to the law we abide to the law because of commonality because of respect integrity and the life of the individual should be cherished as a whole thank you thank you contestant number four May we now call on contestant number five. <laughs> to our distinguished panel of judges, teachers, centralians, and to my fellow contestants, a pleasant morning to all. The question that I picked is number two. The Philippines is labeled as the only Christian country in Asia. Christianity teaches that homosexuality is sin against God. However, many Western countries which have more freedom are allowing same-sex marriage. Moreover, there are many homosexualities in our country. Should same-sex marriage be legalized? Yes or no? Discuss your opinion. As a Christian and as a Centralian, I am not in favor to legalize same-sex marriage because of the following main reasons. First, as Filipinas, we do uphold and value our culture, norms, and our moral foundations. And if this same-sex marriage will legalize, um, it will undermine the sanctity of marriage, which our moral foundations and culture teaches us that it only involves between a man and a woman. Second, same-sex marriage will not um, produce ex equality. Yes, um, as a person and, and as a Filipino, we do, we do value and we do accept LGBTQ+. But um, our, um, our freedom and our equality has limitations. And that is why I do not agree that same-sex marriage would be legalized. Third and lastly, let us also consider the effects of this same-sex marriage. Let us consider a child. Yes, um, after same-sex marriage, the couple will be, uh, will be given the freedom or the right to adopt a child. But let us consider that the child must have its mother and father figure. But through same-sex marriage, or through same-sex couples, they cannot give it to them. And that would affect the psychological being of the child. That would be all, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, good morning. Thank you, contestant number five. We may now have contestant number six. Ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant morning to each and everyone. Once our country was labeled as the pearl of the Orient Seas regarding the, of the strong economic stabilization that we had before. And it, it is actually good that right now, as we grow and as we move, move forward, we experience a lot of economic stabilization, such as, for example, we achieve 
opportunities of giving free education to Filipino youth, which is very beneficial to each and every one of us. And we have this build, build, build program, which enhances our infrastructure here in the Philippines. And the question goes like this, question number 17. The Philippine economy is doing well and is going strong according to the country's president. Has the president been truthful and realistic in his claims about the status of our country's economy? Or has he been misleading the Filipinos into believing what isn't true? Explain your answer. Our president has been doing well, I assure you, and I have mentioned some of these examples earlier. And you know what? With regard to this question, as Filipinos, we should not blame our president because we, each and every one of us, are accountable and responsible for the economic stabilization and for the growth of our country. Imagine the fact that if we not blame our country and contribute individually for the progress of this nation. And what I want to tell you regarding the central spirit, yes, we have the central spirit in Central Philippine University. And the essence of central spirit, what if we share it to other Filipino people and start inspiring them in order to be more responsible and more accountable citizens? And my dear Filipinos, let us not just depend on our government. Let us start with ourselves and let us have unity with the cooperation of our government and to us individuals. I believe that we can achieve progress and prosperity. Thank you. Thank you, contestant number six. Let us now call on contestant number seven. Psalm chapter 82 verse 3 says, Defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Ladies and gentlemen, panel of judges, a pleasant morning. This is my question. What activities of human that cause global warming and warm up nature? What do you think are the good steps to be done to in order to stop it and reclaim the old nature, natural beauty of nature? As what can you see today? There are pollutions. Wastes of human, doings of inhumane activities. So these are the following steps that we should do. S U S. S. We should be sensitive. Through our inner selves, we should see what is there that we could that we could do something. If there's a trash, then just pick it up. That's a simple step. As a student, as we are. Number two, upgrade our system. Just like, for example, our electronic vehicles that doesn't produce any pollution that causes carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide that co uh, covering our ozone layer. And lastly, be the steward of this nation. Be the steward of our environment. We are born in this world to not degrade our system, but of course, to protect it and be the steward and the guidance that our Earth needs. And I believe I have spoken. Thank you. Thank you, contestant number seven. Contestant number eight. We live in a world of code where an error doesn't make a mistake until one refuses to correct it. But how are we able to redirect our steps and recalibrate our mindsets towards the oozing issues in our environment in our country if we keep on refusing to see if what is the reality ladies and gentlemen without further ado this is the question that i have picked number 15 what impact does social networking such as facebook instagram twitter and other social networking sites have on students do these sites affect their performance in school negatively or positively will we humans interfere the world we built rising skyscrapers and avatar pictures. And this does not just conclude that we humans are being controlled by the contemporary scheme. We created Facebook, we created Twitter, and other social networking sites that slowly, slowly tears us, humankind, apart. Well, ladies and gentlemen, these networking sites actually have two things on this context this positive things and the neg negative effects to the students and their performance in school well first in the negative effects we all know that 
these social networking sites, if we get ad addicted to it, we will get dopamine. And this substance will tear our minds apart and it will give us the thing that we would like to tear our humanity that will lead to the downfall of humanity rather. And to the positive effects of the students is that we are able to share, to reinforce connectivity by customizing Facebook of pages through raising awareness about the environment, about our economic status, about this one collective Filipino society. It is up to us if how we use the social networking sites. It is, it is up to us because at the end, it is still us who will surely realize that an error doesn't make a mistake until one refuses to correct it. After all, it is still us that will surely realize that we should not play blind games and blame games because of these things that are controlling us. Ladies and gentlemen, an African proverb says that if you water the weeds, it's the weeds that grow. And if you water the sunflowers, it's the sunflower that grow. Ladies and gentlemen, why are you worrying? Thank you, contestant number eight. May we now call on contestant number nine. Hi. An angel, an angel cannot be seen on the outside appearance, but on the qualities of a person, and that is called beauty. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My question reads, are beauty pageants a way to objectifying women? Do these contestants degrade women who don't have the physical and personal qualities as of those, those quali qualified to compete? Yes or no? Discuss your opinion. Having a beauty pageant is not merely about the looks, but it is also about the qualities of a person and it's, and and a person's brain and there are, and i can say that having a, a beauty passion does not objectify only to the beauty of a woman but it is also to the qualities of a person there are three main points to justify those first is the liberty of the pageant as we all know having a pageant means accept, accepting all kinds of women there is a liberty in it. We can have any kind of women, no matter what, uh, no matter what kind of beauty she has. Secondly, is the subjectivity of the so-called beauty. When we say subject subjectivity of the beauty, it is always on the eye of the beholder. Subjectivity of the beauty can be can be factioned and can be defined by the objectivity of the contest criteria. Therefore it does not degrade a woman's physical appearance alone. Overall, I can say that having a beauty pageant is, uh, is, uh, does not degrade any kind of, uh, of, does not degrade the woman's right or any uh, qualities of a person. And now I have spoken. Thank you, contestant number nine. Number 10. <laughs> Soundtrack. To the panel of judges, to my fellow students, a pleasant morning to all of you. Allow me to present my views and response to the question that reads, will posting students' grades on bulletin boards publicly motivate them to perform better, or is it humiliating? Discuss your opinion. I strongly disagree to post the, grades, the students' grades on bulletin boards for two reasons. And it, and it could greatly affect for two sides, the students who get low grades and the students who get high grades. In terms of students who get high grades, it is beneficial for them to see that their grades are on top and it, serves them, um, it will serve them as a motivation. However, on the contrary, if students who get low grades that will post their grades on the bulletin boards, it will serve them as a humiliation in their part because um, they receive low grades compared to, the, to those students who get high grades. Um, 
To the best of my abilities, I substantiated my answer. Thank you. Thank you, contestant number 10. Contestant number 11. My test. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. The great national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal, once said, Ang hindi marunong ng sariling wika ay higit pa sa malansang isda. My question is, it's number 11, Filipino language is not a language used in business and legal transactions. Moreover, English has been used in the academe for knowledge development, technology, business, and legal transactions. Should we consider English to be our national language, like Singapore, that uses it, that uses it as their national language? To be straightforward, my answer to this is no, for two reasons. First, to strip our country of our national language, Filipino, would be to strip ourselves of our cultural identity. Our, a country is known internationally based on the language they speak. It may, not be, it may not represent their full identity, but it is a big part. To strip ourselves of that crucial big part of our identity would, to, would damage our identity as Filipinos uh, internationally. Second, I believe a national language should be closer to our culture. What is the language that is spoken every day? When you talk to the vendor, when you ride a jeepney, what language do you use? Hiligay non, bisaya, waray waray, whatever, Tagalog. All of these languages, ladies and gentlemen, are not English. That's why I believe that the mode of communication that is most commonly used should be our national language. But I cannot deny the usefulness, especially in global competence, the use of the English language. But let us be clear about the purpose of English language. The reason English is the medium of instruction and the language of the law is to make ourselves more globally competent and more applicable internationally. It is not to strip ourselves of our integrity. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment Filipinos do not speak Filipino is the moment we are definitely not Filipinos. Thank you. Thank you, contestant number 11. All right, thank you very much, contestants. All of you surely delivered your answers eloquently and to the best of your abilities. You may now go down stage. Thank you so much to award the certificate for our judges. The certificate reads Central Philippine University Iloilo City Philippines awards this Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Bona Palma for invaluable service and significant contribution to make the 114th University Day celebration a meaningful and successful affair by serving as judge for the 2019 University Day English Oration and Extemporaneous Speaking Contests given the 17th day of September in the year of our Lord, 2019, and at the 114th year of Central Philippine University. Signed, Dr. Eric G. Lagradilla, overall chairperson, Engineer Riago Ferrer L. Garcia, CPOR president, and Dr. Chudoro C. Robles, university president. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. The same certificate is awarded to Mr. Clem Marnell Burgos. Same, cer same certificate is awarded to, to Dr. Alexis Diamante, 
for for his invaluable service for this morning's um, event. Centralians, are you still there? <laughs> I'm sure all of you are excited to know our winners for the English Oration Contest. Without further ado, I will be announcing our third placer. Our third placer for the English oration is contestant contestant number 5 from the department of junior high school Our second placer, our second placer is none other than contestant, contestant number four from the College of Engineering. And lastly, our first placer. Our first placer for the English oration is none other than contestant, contestant number seven from the College of Hospitality Management. All right, photo op with our winners for the English oration. Congratulations to the College of Engineering, Hospitality Management, and Junior High School. Let's give our winners a big round of applause. Congratulations. We will also be awarding the winners for the extemporaneous speaking in a short while. Hands, are you still there? All right, to finally award the winners for our English extemporaneous speaking, I will be starting with our third placer. The third placer for the English extemporaneous speaking goes to contestant. Contestant number eight, from the College of Arts and Sciences. Let's give them a big round of applause. Our second placer. Our second placer is from the Department of Senior High School. Contestant number 11. And finally, for our first placer, the first placer for this year's University Day 2019 English Extemporaneous Speaking is none other than contestant, contestant number five from the College of Education. Congratulations. Let's give our winners a big round of applause. It is not easy to go on stage. 
and answer a question so very extemporaneously. <laughs> Congratulations again to our winners from the Department of Senior High School, College of Arts and Sciences, and College of Education. Congratulations. Thank you to our judges, our spectators, our tabulators, and the committee. Thank you very much and good morning. See you at 1 p.m. later also at the pro same venue here at the Alumni Promenade Concert Park for our declamation, English declamation contest. Thank you and God bless us all.